Welcome to my presentation at the Qualys Security Conference 2020. This is Mayuresh Thani, and in the next 30 minutes, I present an attacker's view of your cyber security defenses. I also present a patent pending approach that helps us quantify asset criticality, user risk behavior, and use this knowledge to take remediative steps all the while thinking like an attacker. We will see if this approach helps us in predicting an attacker's next move so that preventive actions can be taken before an attack really happens. Why should only attackers have fun when we can build on the home advantage that multiple Wallace products already provide us? Let us have a look at the approach that we are taking and understand the challenges uh, before we go to the solution. All right. So this is a typical enterprise setup. This is an uh, enterprise uh, network where you have a couple of, uh, more than a couple of uh, subnets, an exchange server and SharePoint server. All of these are uh, connected via Active Directory. This is this looks pretty simple, but when you introduce uh, abnormalities such as uh, vulnerable product, vulnerable protocols, uh, misconfigurations, and uh, different uh, vulnerabilities. This is where things get uh, interesting. For example, LOLBAS. You must know uh, that LOLBAS stands for living off the land, binaries and scripts and libraries as well. What this means is that these are signed binaries, uh, leg legitimate binaries from multiple vendors such as Microsoft and Linux vendors as well which are uh, trusted by these uh, by by these platforms and they help uh, us not only us but attackers as well to you know compile code um, to launch uh, to move laterally or even with their persistence attempts so if we are if they are not controlled properly that would lead to a problem same with the protocol such as smb or kerberos now we know SMB is really um, trivial, <laughs> I'm sorry, not trivial, but it really is essential for us. We can't do without it and we cannot do with it. That's the current situation, you see. Um, for, for, for you see, since the year 2017, uh, multiple exploits have been um, targeting SMB itself. Uh, they started, uh, the most recent example being SMB lead. That's the CB2021206, which is uh, uh, an exploit for the latest SMB v3.1 uh, version. Uh, that's the Microsoft implementation, of course. And then, uh, and then uh, Kerberos. We cannot really do without Kerberos in a, a connected environment as well. Um, so as you see, these things are uh, difficult. I mean, I mean, when these attributes come into play, it gets difficult in securing the network. So to summarize what I'm trying to say, uh, with these attributes, it gets difficult for an attacker uh, to identify if really it is an at attacker. For example, more, uh, referring back to my low bass um, statement, there's a, a utility called as MS build, which is normally used by um, developers to build their source code. Uh, consider if an attacker uh, has already compromised your network and he sort of, you know, downloads that source code on the on, a, on an endpoint and compiles it. What happens then? It is the source code cannot be scanned. I mean, cannot be scanned for malicious uh, by antiviruses or mal uh, for malicious nests and it once compiled, uh, really the code is there on your system. What happens then? Uh, now this is from an attacker's perspective, but what if and what if uh, legitimate users are doing this? An example uh, being honey exploiting. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you must have heard about this this experiment uh, that was done around uh, six months or nine months ago, uh, researchers uploaded benign uh, exploits in uh, GitHub, GitHub um, repositories and had uh, and had and published them and waited for people to upload them and provide telemetry as to who is using these uh, exploits. Surprisingly, 
multiple security companies as well uh, i mean people from multiple security com- companies as well ran these exploits without really checking what is inside uh, what what is happening inside the uh, exploit now if security companies i mean employees from security companies can do this just understand what would it be what would it mean for uh, normal developers who don't have the security bent of mind uh, th- the second example uh, being uh, 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 compromises of uh, libraries such as or typo squatting of libraries such as uh, python now there's another ex- ex- exciting experiment that was done around uh, a year or two ago by researchers where they typo squatted or you know ch- changed a bit of the characters or uh, spellings of well known python libraries and they uploaded to pypy the place where people normally upload or download their uh, libraries from and they waited for uh, people to download them for download them and use them and they also presented uh, multiple warnings to these people who have been use, who use these libraries just understand if developers can also do that how so what i'm trying the point that i'm trying to make is risky user behavior uh, cannot be tracked and is most of the times given less importance and even though i'm i mean i uh, i'm from qualis being the world leader in uh, vulnerability scanning it unfortunately vulnerability scanning fails to detect attack maps uh, it in the sense that it gives you di- disconnected data from uh, uh, disconnected data for example it will tell you that a certain vulnerability exists or our policy compliance product will tell you that a certain uh, misconfiguration exists but on a certain device that is all um, it will also tell you if a vulnerability exists in the network that is all but it does not really lead you to an attack map and again as i said uh, misconfigura- misconfigurations per asset are found per asset based does not really give you the whole picture and hence this leads to uh, large scale network misconfigurations what surety do you have that the network uh, rules that you set around say 2 weeks ago are valid even now i mean i'm sure there are uh, you know policies and procedures in place but some some rules or some t- tinkering of rules leads to um, can lead to misconfigurations in the networks as well so with having cleared all of this let us see the qualis approach that we are taking uh the patent the patent pending uh, solution i was talking about earlier is the qualis attack path discovery this uses the same lightweight qualis agent and overlays connectivity uh, and overlays connectivity data and vulnerability data from multiple sources such as vmdr uh, policy compliance and the passive network sensor we also quantify user risk and identify asset context uh, based on the uh, contextuality of the asset and then we use graph theory to identify uh, attack path traje- trajectory um when we all of, when do when we do all of this we reveal large scale network deviations from your policies uh one particular uh, saying i would like to bring forth is by uh, john john lambert that was uh, some time ago he he mentions that defenders think in lists and attackers think in graphs as long as this is true attackers win this is where we thought of using graph theory uh, and uh, to identify all of uh, you know to connect all of this data so that we can uh, we can build a good product that can help you and um frankly this is true as well so that i mean you just don't go according to lists you know uh, you connect in the end what is important is a connection uh, so <laughs> that's what i meant by you know m- mentioning this quote uh, so to give you a brief overview of what we are doing uh, user risk behavior is at the core of our uh, core or at the center of our uh, uh product the attack path discovery product we then add contextual asset information and then overlay uh, network vulnerability basis information on top of this 
to give you more precise information, this is what we do. Uh, so for example, to quantify user risk behavior, we look at what installed applications does a user have. Um, for example, uh, if you, if the, you know, on a particular system, you have say Python IDE, uh, Microsoft Visual C++ compiler, and a couple of more uh, compilers and SDK applications, we can safely make an assumption that this is a developer system. Same uh, if there are, uh, when you move to the type of files on the found on the file system, we can say that if there are more number of Excel sheets or PDF files or document files found in the system, this can be an executive level uh, asset. Now this, uh, we rate these assets diff differently because as I mentioned in the uh, earlier, the LOLBAS example that I gave and the MS build example that I gave, um, on a developer system, since they need to constantly develop uh, applications and uh, compile codes, uh, maybe, or most of the times, uh, app, locker setting, app locker settings on these applications is lax. And hence, consider what, as a, the example that I gave, what if an attacker got onto the developer system and you know compiles the whole uh, malware that he has and he can move uh, from that system to wherever he wants. And then we tend to save credentials in the browsers, in our browsers. And uh, that's another problem, uh, you know, save credentials are another problem. We can simply use them and access whatever resources uh, they are saved for. And then use a and then browser bookmarks are also uh, used, can also be used by attackers to sort of understand what are, uh, how is their network topology built. Uh, for example, normally uh, it would reveal uh, IP addresses and port numbers and sort of from the URLs you can make up what application uh, is the bookmark saved for. And then again, user privileges. if if a user if a user is a local admin well then that's uh, that's more the easier for the attacker and then uh, we add contextual asset information uh, for example presence of vulnerabilities policy miscon misconfigurations and uh, low bass existence and then if app locker uh, settings or uh, misconfigurations exist and then there are multiple ways in which uh, privilege escalation can be can be carried out. Um, for example, there is uh, this registry setting in Windows mm, the, uh, is always is installed elevated. If this is enabled for a certain user, uh, anything or any uh, MSI file can be executed with elevated privileges. So um, just imagine what an attacker would do with these uh, settings, misconfigurations, I would say. And then this, once inside a network, once a user is authenticated to a network or uh, an Active Directory or LDAP or however your network is set up, uh, sort of he gets access to the whole network and the connectivity that it provides. Uh, so it gets easier for an attacker. The point I'm trying to make is these uh, activities such as uh, going through installed applications um, save credentials, um, trying for misconfigurations and looking for privilege escalation support are all carried out by attackers in real world. And the MITRE ATT&CK framework lists them down really well. Uh, so that is one resource that you can uh, refer to as well. Um, and then all of this LDAP information uh, and once an attacker has uh, access to the network, he can simply see what traffic uh, is flowing through and make an educated guess uh, as to if you know if the traffic is encrypted or not and you know things like that and well that's these are some of the features or uh, things that we do as well now without spending any more time let's have a look at the demo of the product and then uh, we'll come back uh, for more information then this is the demo. So this is the uh, concept um, screen, concept dash, dashboard concept screen for the attack path discovery product. Uh, as you can see, this has multiple widgets, uh, 
customizable widgets as well which you can um, all uh, which has always been this feature of college products where you can configure uh, anything uh, in the widgets and all the features that you want um, um, so over here you can see there are a couple of uh, widgets that I've configured probable attack path confirmed attack paths costless attack paths and attacks that assets that allow Kerberos um, so by probable attack path uh, paths we mean that uh, for some because of some reason we are not sure that this attack path might exist right now you'll understand uh, what I mean in a, in a use case that I uh, plan to uh, showcase in a few minutes from now uh, and and the same goes with the assets that allow curb roast as well so uh, there are these are two use cases that I plan to show right now and there's another third one which uh, you will see in a few minutes um, also confirmed attack paths converse to uh, probable attack path is where we are sure that this attack path really exists so uh, with that out of out of the way let's have a look at the current attack paths that we have uh, that or we can look at um, so as the screen shows there are a total of 67 attack paths right now uh, on this uh, uh, in, in this network they are arranged according to their attack path id um, source asset is where uh, the attack path begins target asset is where the attack path ends um, since we also take into consideration user risk uh, this is the user name under um, username which is maybe a part of this uh, attack path or uh, or maybe a contributor to the attack path so hence the username um, assets signifies the number of assets in this uh, attack path same goes for subnets number of subnets in the attack path and the overlap between the uh, attack paths now overlapped assets overlap subnets coverage and overlapped coverage comes from the uh, graph theory which is the basis for uh, generation generating this attack path and uh, then as i mentioned um, uh, we come up with a risk score aggregated aggregate risk score which is uh, takes into con consideration user risk user behavior risk asset context and uh, the network and uh, network reachability and vulnerability and misconfiguration data so we combine all of that to give you uh, aggregated risk score which is presented at the uh, in the last column over here um, yes looking at this uh, you can say that uh, mk smith is a part of one two three four five six uh, attack paths and uh, you should really look at take a look at uh, this asset or this person's account right now to um, <laughs> to understand what is really wh why is this user really contributing to so many attack paths um, and uh, so this is one of the ways with which in which you can also use this product uh, going to the first uh, first use case this is a simple use case where we have uh, four subnets of which only two are affected the de developer subnet and the management subnet the asset in developers uh, in the developer subnet and the first asset in the developer subnet uh, start uh, the attack path starts at this subnet uh, this asset and ends at this the second asset uh, now why is this why why does this attack path exist the reason being um, reason being we found the IP address for the second asset based on uh, the site list.xml file that uh, that is my cafe normally uses to download patches from uh, the system uh, yeah on the system so uh, now as you can see this is a lot of metadata about uh, our um, you know, rating schema and um, uh, risk score which technically might change but uh, yes this gives you a very uh, good view as to how uh, this rating is done we does this asset have vulnerabilities does this has asset have misconfigurations is the user logged in as an administrator or uh, is a part of a local admin group is user registry logon enabled and so on and so forth multiple 
security um, considerations as well. For example, is LSAS protection enabled? So for uh, for operating systems, um, Windows, Microsoft Windows 8.1 and onwards, uh, Microsoft has provided additional protection for the LSA process to uh, prevent untrusted processes from uh, accessing its memory or uh, inject in, or trying to inject code. Um, this is this really uh, is helpful in one of the ways in which you can uh, prevent the impact of tools such as Mimikatz. And uh, uh, so, I mean, this is what also we look at. And uh, remember the registry key I mentioned, always install elevated earlier in my presentation. So this is also, uh, we look at uh, uh, that registry key. And so what, what signifies here is that uh, even though there is, uh, um, I mean, even though there are no vulnerabilities on this uh, host, but it is a contributor to uh, the attack path. Uh, and it can be a contributor to the attack path. But why is this attack path of any significance is because uh, we have this asset, the end, uh, end of the attack path is, uh, has this uh, vulnerability, uh, which, is, which is also called as the bits please vulnerability. Um, now this came in uh, October this year, uh, which is fairly fresh and very trivial to exploit using just uh, the 7-zip file manager and uh, simply you can uh, access it or or for that matter of fact any other uh, man application that has can access ntfs uh, uh, files uh, so you can simply use those that application to read uh, data that you don't have access to uh, this is rated pretty low on CVSS score 2.1, but uh, I think there is really high risk uh, uh, vulnerability and uh, you should really have a look at it. And uh, so that is why one of the reasons uh, this is also uh, uh, high, uh, you know, the, you should take a look at this attack path uh, and solve it, resolve it. This is the second attack path where, which involves four uh, assets. Um, this uh, the same asset uh, what what happened in this point in this uh, in this use case is that we enumerated uh, or uh, firefox bookmarks were enumerated and found a link to this uh, asset which uh, has a jboss installation which is again unprotected because based on these callis uh, qids and uh, the way that uh, this as person from or an attacker can move from this asset to the next asset is based on uh, metadata or uh, most recently fi used files information from the registry for uh, terminal services. So it may happen that a user from the asset number two might have tried to access the asset number three uh, via ter uh, terminal services. And why is term this asset of any importance? It is because uh, of these vulnerabilities, we can see that uh, this is the uh, net logon or uh, uh, the zero logon vulnerability, uh, and so obviously this is a domain controller. So this would be definitely uh, on a higher uh, risk potential and uh, uh, a very good target for an attacker to uh, get an access on, uh, and. But yet, there's this other attack path that exists from the domain controller to the fourth asset because uh, this is uh, another high level target uh, asset which has uh, Zoho uh, Manage Engine uh, Desktop Central installed, which can technically be uh, used to um, feed misconfiguration data or uh, malwares or sort of a backdoors to uh, other assets in the network. And then the last uh, use case that I wish to discuss today is this use case where we uh, stress the uh, um, uh, use of QQL-like, uh, uh, QQL language. Uh, so over here, what we are saying is that find all operating, find all systems, Microsoft Windows systems, which 
have the SNP, uh, uh, SPN capability set to true. Now this can be found here as well in the metadata. Uh, what is happening uh, here is if, if you remember on the in the second slide, I mentioned about the Kerberos attack. So uh, now Kerberos attack is uh, was introduced in the year 2014 by a researcher named Tim Medin and it essentially is a password cracking attack in which Active Directory service account credentials are stolen from um, memory and crack and can be cracked offline. Not only that, uh, if, if, if this uh, particular registry setting is not there or um, has not been set, tools like Mimikatz can be used to simply um, inject these uh, raw or uh, credentials directly into the system memory and now this can then uh, allow attackers to laterally move or you know elevate privileges as well so this is why uh, this uh, this attack path is also uh, important and um, Oh, I, I forgot to mention about these uh, user privileges as well. So you can see that there are multiple uh, user privileges that we show here as well. Uh, SE security privilege, take ownership privilege, load drivers. So you'd know, uh, even if you look at these uh, privileges, you can see what these each uh, do and what would they enable an attacker to do. So uh, normally attackers would enumerate all of these privileges um, by what is called as of um, situational awareness techniques and then make use of them as well uh, all this is fine but what do you do when you have these uh, when you know that these attack paths exist um, so based on the um, uh, aggregated risk score we give you recommendations such as this so uh, based on uh, the re the highest uh, asset with the highest aggregated risk score, we we can suggest that uh, you, if you install these two um, patches, uh, you would the attack path would technically fail, and uh, would the uh, and you can remediate that at attack path. Um, you can add this to a job. Uh, and have it run in the background using um, uh, the Qualys platform. And uh, uh, and this is in short uh, what you can do with uh, remediating this attack path. If you also, you can also use uh, isolate option to uh, isolate a particular uh, asset. I would, uh, I mean me personally, I would, uh, uh, I would isolate the, this asset itself, the first asset itself, uh, that is Mr. Uh, M. K. Smith or uh, asset that Mr. M. K. Smith uh, is on, and try to see all, all that he's done on the system, he or she has done on the system, and uh, isolate it using the Qualys product, a uh, Qualys uh, platform. Um, there are multiple ways that you can. Uh, uh, fix an attack path, uh, fix it at the originate, uh, originating asset, fix it at the uh, highest risk asset, uh, risk asset that's what we've taken. So, um, uh, and then all of this is based on uh, the asset aggregated risk score. So after you have uh, gone through these many uh, multiple as, uh, attack paths, what you can do is um, you can always go back and configure uh, on your uh, dashboard multi whatever you, you'd want to see and um, see your daily or monthly progress and uh, over a period of 30 days or whatever you want to set out as. And um, we may add or we are also looking into adding um, simulate uh, validation uh, capability soon so you can also once you have added uh, re remediating or once you have remediated a certain attack path you can uh, see if this uh, your remediation actions have been successful or not and 
um, yeah, or or even before added, adding some uh, remediating actions, you can see if uh, this attack path really exists or not. So that is all I had for the demo. Let's get back to the uh, uh, presentation. Thank you. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the demo that I gave and uh, are interested, already interested in wanting to know when would this product be released. So this is the immediate strategic roadmap for this uh, for police attack uh, uh, this attack path discovery product, and we are aiming at uh, Q1 2021 beta release. That's uh, less than three months from now. Um, in Q2, we want to add improved security data ingestion and vulnerability correlation, granular risk support, and network and asset uh, introduction as well. Q3, we want to add refined Linux and Mac OS support. And Q4, we want to move uh, or add support for cloud assets. That in the end, that, that is where um, we want to go, right? Because cloud assets are important as well. And that is all for my presentation. Thank you. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at, this, at the email address that I mentioned uh, in my presentation. Um, and I hope you have, asked, uh, you have your questions asked in your live Q&A session as well. Thank you. Thank you.